Let's go to work. <sighs> All right, guys. So I feel like it's been a while since I kind of like spoke to you guys, like, you know, just like one on one. So let's start from the very beginning. Now, for everyone who is new to the channel, my name is Saloni Verma and I am a biomedical engineer. Um, I graduated from Cornell University. I work in upstate New York. And through this YouTube channel, we talk about college admissions, how international students can get into top Ivy League universities, elite colleges. And every now and then, I like to rant about the lack of views and likes on the channel as well. <laughs> um, but I thought that in this video, I will kind of like take you along with me throughout the day, uh, show you what a day in the life of a biomedical engineer looks like and touch a little bit on kind of like the tech layoffs that have been going on. Now, I would be quite worried if you guys didn't know what I'm talking about. But for anyone who isn't up to speed, here is a little snapshot of what's going on. 150,000 tech workers have been laid off in 2022 alone. Amazon today announcing it's going to cut 18,000 workers. So I'm not going to bore you guys with like the big story of what happened. But in the last few years, companies overhired. They thought that they would need a lot of people. They didn't. That's why they're starting to lay those people off because there just isn't enough amount of work. Uh, for all of those over hires that they did. Um, so as international students, why should you be worried and how much should you be worried is the question of the hour. And I would say that a lot of the students that are graduating right now that are already here are facing like the biggest hurdle of the tech layoffs in general. Um, if you see kind of like the growth and these situations that have happened in the past, these tech layoffs don't don't like go on for years and years and years. They ultimately stop. And um, if someone is planning to come to the US to study, there's a good chance that by the time you come here, finish your degree and graduate, this situation won't be how it is right now. So from like a future perspective, international student standpoint, I feel like it's a pretty safe bet to choose US as your um, continuing further education. And biomedical in general, like for me, exa for example, I have a variety of skill sets all the way from like lab work. I have some programming skills, like I've taught myself how to do MATLAB, Python, JavaScript, some amount of coding that's required, work on medical devices, um, work on the hardware as well as the software side of things. So I feel like in that sense, because biomedical engineering is so closely related to healthcare, it's not being affected by the tech layoffs as bad as other departments like um, engineering management, uh, software engineers, these kind of people are at the moment. So that's like a good transition of like going into what I actually do. Now, I graduated from Cornell about five years ago. And when I started working at the company that I am working at right now, it was more heavily reliant on um kind of like the R&D side of uh, medical devices. So I would be very involved in actually developing the products. But more recently, I would say in the last two years, I've shifted to more into like managing the products that are already out there, um, identifying the scope of where we can improve them. And then as from like a technical standpoint, uh, laying out a plan of action of, okay, these are the improvements that can actually be done. How do we uh, make this happen, making sure that we're following all the regulatory FDA guidelines, because of course, it is the healthcare industry. Um, and then also being more hands on with meeting with different clients, going to different hospital sites, obviously, you know, for confidentiality purposes, I can't give you guys like the details. So a lot of this may seem a little vague. But I'm trying to be like as educational as I can, um, maybe for someone who's thinking of going into BME as a career. This is generally like what you can do, like as you progress in your career. The best part about this field that I like is you can really like mold it to what you like to do and what you don't like to do. It's not necessary that if you hate, let's say, 
chemistry for example you have to be stuck in a lab doing you know that kind of work that's not what it is you can literally like branch out and make a career for yourself with the things that you enjoy doing so with that said today i am heading up to canada and we are going on a site visit um this is a client that we've been working very closely with uh, again we're going to help them set up develop some experimental protocols do some lab work and all that fun stuff and like i said like this is a part of the job itself where we're trying to identify the scope of improvement for our product lines that are already there and from like a technical standpoint how can we make it happen so that you know we stay up to date with the current technology and we as like a medical device company are also improving as we move forward because ultimately you know we want to create really cool um healthcare tech and before we head out you know the one thing that i always carry with me and this is literally like it one box stays with me in my car itself it is our dossier perfume they come in these like really compact boxes and today we are rocking the fiery leather and rhubarb flavor flavor fragrance um but as you can see it comes in like these really travel friendly bottles very compact the lid just like literally snaps on and i love you know the entire fragrance of this perfume i carry it in i carry one in my car just to have as like a backup i have one at home i have one at work and if you guys want to check these out these are luxury fragrances at affordable prices um you can use the code in the description for a discount at checkout That was an exhausting morning, but I finally finished up some lab work and uh now I'm going to go get lunch and during that time I'll also like kind of respond to emails that have been going on in the office since I couldn't get that done today in the morning. Um I'll get some paperwork done uh for like the lab work that I did today. Again, like everything has to be documented. This is like one of the things that not a lot of biomedical engineers share, but every little thing that you do has to be documented. Some students or Well some um engineers do it in like a lab notebook some do it in Notion you can do it online or you have like certain SOPs and paperwork that you have to fill out for like according to your company or your university but in some way or another the whole point is it needs to be documented each and every step that you did so if there are any improvements we can do that if there are any mistakes we can catch that on for later I'm super hungry uh there's this nice um Indian place that I found in Waterloo it's about 30 minutes of a drive so we're going to go head there and uh have lunch and I need to come back here around like 4 we'll work for another 2 more hours need to get some more meetings and presentations done with folks over here in Canada out of the way and I'll see you guys in a bit today has been an amazing day everything that did not work yesterday just whatever we fixed basically last night that experiment worked fabulous i was able to get the training done we got like another experiment set up and everyone's happy we got a bunch of meetings out of the way a lot of this involves um uh defining certain protocols that our clients can use that work for them and that also kind of um work with the technology we have to offer right um so all good it's about 1 p.m. right now in the afternoon i'm pulling out of the parking lot and it's time to go home back to ethica it was stressful at times for sure like just like 
troubleshooting at unexpected uh, milestones and time points can be challenging but that's part of the job as an engineer as a biomedical engineer that's what you're paid to do essentially um, and I'll catch you guys in a little bit uh, gonna fuel up get some lunch along the way and I'll see you guys in a bit All right guys, so that wraps up, well, kind of like the meetings that I had with some of the students. And honestly, it's such a pleasure to talk to them and just kind of like help them in their own study abroad journeys. If you guys are interested in the mentorship programs, the link will be in the description below. It's through Incognito Blueprints, check it out. Extremely useful. No, honestly, the students that have applied for the fall 2023 intake, we've gotten acceptances from Cornell, Columbia, early decisions, um, Brown, Duke were waitlisted on Harvard and Princeton, so that's coming very soon. Um, Carnegie Mellon, UCs, whatnot, both for undergrad, grad, PhD students with tremendous amount of funding. So it's really something that can help shape your future. But I'm going to wrap up the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed that day in the life of a biomedical engineer. Um, and let me know if you have any questions based on like the work that I told you guys about. I'd be happy to answer them in the comments below. Uh, but we are now here to do the question of the day. Today's question is going to be from last video's um, comments, which is, um, can I get an RA in the first year of undergrad and how much are the pay areas like in Arizona? So I'm not going to lie. It's a little difficult to get... Um, research assistantship positions in the first semester because the process what it looks like is you have to approach professors and they like to kind of talk to you in person maybe see what your skill set is like and this is realistically done when you're on campus when you've had the chance to maybe take a class in the first semester of that professor build a working relationship and then ask for that RA position I'm not saying it's impossible some students have but it's extremely unlikely that you'll be able to secure an RA position as an international student in the first semester. It's more possible from the second semester onwards. And the pay, let's take, um, let's say ASU, for example, will be somewhere between 13 to $15 per hour. After taxes, it'll be about $12 per hour. And that's like a good range to kind of keep yourself in. Um, and kind of like a follow up question to this, a lot of students ask if you kind of are allowed to work 20 hours on campus. Um, can you show this on your like as proof of funds? And no, you cannot. So your I-20, when you get it for your F-1 visa, the amount that's on that I-20, the dollar amount, you have to show that as liquid funds. You cannot say that I will get to this amount after I start working in college. The amount that you earn in college as a student can be used towards living expenses, your rent, food, other miscellaneous things, but um, it's not as uh, a proof of funds thing. All right, so that's all that I had for you guys in this video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.